The idea for this exhibition, if I remember well, goes back a couple of years. It was during uh, a meeting uh, at the Luxembourg Film Festival together with um, Alexis uh, Juncosa. In the discussion we talked about uh, the possibility of such an exhibition since he knew that I was interested in uh, the topic uh, for many years and I, I, I gave a couple of speeches uh, concerning this uh, topic. It took a couple of years until I became uh, or I, I, I thought that it would be interesting to put this into practice, to really uh, have such an exhibition, but I was aware that we should be very amb ambitious. So I asked first Eve uh, Steichen uh, from the CNA to uh, work with me on such an exhibition. We already worked on an exhibition on Thierry van Werwecke, the Luxembourgish actor, but we were also uh, aware that we needed even more help, and so we asked uh, Chiara Lenz to join us, and so we put we, we sat together and we decided to make something rather ambitious about the, uh, the, the decor, the set design in Luxembourg movies. And immediately we were aware that there were four main topics. The first one would be uh, to see uh, in what sense the set really plays an, a major part in every step of the production of a film from the script to the screen. So this is a very pedagogical part of the exhibition. Uh, and, uh, but on the other hand, it's also a way to uh, give all these people who work in the shadow in the pro of a production uh, of a movie, to give them, uh, to, to put some light on their work. And in the interviews we did, these people were very happy to talk about uh, their work. Uh, and to uh, make it known uh, to the general public. In that sense, it's really um, it's a pedagogical part of the exhibition, uh, what we call uh, educa education uh, à l'image, so uh, media uh, learning, so people learn about how film functions. So that was one part of the exhibition. The second part was about the illusion. Foreign films being shot in Luxembourg in co-production with Luxembourgish producers, foreign films that take place, I don't know, in New York, Tel Aviv, Montreal or where, wherever, but were shot in Luxembourg. So location scouts had to find places where they uh, could shoot such a movie. And uh, they found a lot of uh, interesting places. So in Luxembourg, you could uh, recreate uh, Jerusalem or even Egypt, uh, the Chile uh, and, and other places. So it's uh, through finding the right location, but also through uh, film language. So through editing, through lighting, you can change the set in a way that it really looks like um, the place it's supposed to represent. So uh, in the exhibition you have a, a, a series of rather fascinating and sometimes funny uh, examples of uh, places where films uh, have been shot in Luxembourg not representing Luxembourg. So that was the, uh, that's the second part of the exhibition. The third part of the exhibition is very important for us in the sense that it focuses on Luxembourgish directors and the way they look at their country. Uh, how they look at uh, the city of Luxembourg, to look at uh, rural uh, regions, uh, and so on, so on. So it's, it was important for us to see uh, in what way some cliches and stereotypes were or used or, dest or destroyed through these um, uh, uh, Luxembourg film directors. And then it was clear for us uh, in, since the beginning that we could not make a exhibi an exhibition on uh, film sets in Luxembourg without talking about Venise sur Alzette, so the Venice set that was built in the early 2000s uh, in, in Esch sur Alzette, that was really huge. So we also gave an important part uh, in our exhibition to this set with uh, a lot of, with huge photos, but also uh, other material that shows uh, how this uh, set uh, was built and how it was used. For the film Secret Passage, Jimmy de Brabant, a producer for Deluxe Production, and um, Ademir Kinovic, the director, decided to make a film that was set in Venice. 
But since it's very complicated to uh, shoot films in Venice, which is a city that prefers tourists to uh, film productions, it was very hard to get the uh, necessary authorizations to shoot there. So they decided to come to Luxembourg and to reconstruct the whole set, uh, well, a part of Venice here in Luxembourg. It was a huge project because over um, a, an area of two hectare, hectares, they reconstructed Venice of the 15th century uh, out of wood and plaster. Um, the film, The Secret Passage, did not have a lot of su uh, success which uh, was very disappointing for the production. So they had, and since the decor was quite expensive, they had to uh, promote it so that other uh, film shoots could happen there. Uh, at that moment, um, the film, The Girl with the Pearl Earring, was, was shot and they decided to tr transform the Venice set here in Luxembourg into Delft. So the production designers and accessories they had to be very creative in order to transform a set that was built to represent Venice into the city of Delft. Uh, so they only painted the facades with um, the, red br uh, the red bricks that are famous in the Netherlands. The film brought a lot of star power to Luxembourg with actors uh, like Colin Firth or Scarlett Johansson. Um, and after this project was, uh, was finished, another big project came to Luxembourg, which was the film The Merchant of Venice by Michael Redford. Uh, Jimmy de Brabant, um, once again, uh, he knew Michael Redford and he proposed a decor to him to shoot his film here in Luxembourg. And at that moment, uh, other huge uh, Hollywood stars came to Luxembourg, like Al Pacino, Jeremy Irons or Joseph Fiennes. Lastly, um, the, the set was uh, used for smaller projects that were partly shot here in Luxembourg, like the film Tempesta, um, the Thief Lord, uh, The Lovely with Kevin Klein, or uh, the Luxembourgish short film Mondo Venetiano, directed by Antoine, Antoine Prüm. Um, and the set was also open for tourists to come and visit it. Um, and so a lot of Luxembourgish locals, as well as international tourists, came to the set, which was very popular. In 2007, it became too dangerous and too expensive to maintain a decor of this size. So they had to um, deconstruct it in 2007.